didn't start work seven until we were I think th- twenty nine or thirty. Twenty nine or thirty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think we both had to go and work in the industry and realize like, oh okay, so this this is actually how the world works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is actually how like you know like many of the preconceptions that I had when I was mm-hmm. in university mm-hmm. or in poly mm-hmm. were actually not not so accurate. Selamat datang di Merserum, kerja terus mati belakangan bersama gue Andri Episode kali ini spesial, ini orang-orang dari Singapura So Merspam, kalau anda follow atau ngikutin komiknya So this is guys behind the walk salary man Rui Ming and Wei Chun How are you bro? Good, good. A bit tired because the the jam was a bit much. That's why because he said like, welcome to Jakarta. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're here. Yeah, yeah. But thanks for having us. Yeah, very excited. Yeah, yeah. I follow you guys uh, from I don't know maybe two years or three years ago. Wow. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. You you guys create content mm. with the comic, right? Mm. Yes, using yes. using using comic. So maybe me, I and the Mars fam wondering. How did you guys start this the work salary man? Mm. Yeah, maybe maybe you can you can start. Uh, yeah, we can you can start. Yeah, yeah, I think well actually there are a lot of reasons why I started work salary man. I think maybe got at least two reasons, right? Mm-hmm. The first reason was because like uh, in twenty uh in twenty oh my god how twenty fourteen like my my mom had a stroke. Twenty fourteen, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then after that, like mom, mom had a stroke, and after that, you know, uh, I woke up to my finances. That's why the name is called work salary man. Mm-hmm. Then after that, like. Sometime along the way, I felt like oh, it would be very useful if we put like everything we I learned mm-hmm. into a uh, comic form. Mm-hmm. Because when I was working in advertising, I would try to tell my friends like oh, no, you should save money. But you know, <coughs> usually people in the creative industry they like to spend money, mm-hmm. right? Every week they will buy like a, a new sneaker or a new hundred dollar t shirt. Oh, similar with Indonesia. Yeah. In <laughs> and then and then end of month they'll be like oh no, I have no money. I'm like of course you have no money. You know you every all every month you're buying your like another stupid shit that you that you don't need. So I think that's the first reason why we wanted to create like content that even mm-hmm. uh, my friends in the creative industry will understand. Because like when when I show them like very uh, technical articles, mm-hmm. they're like ah oh, I can't read this. I don't care. Mm. So we want to make the the knowledge bar very very low for them. Okay okay. Yeah. It's really basic knowledge about finance. Exactly. Okay okay. Yeah. Actually, the other reason was like a bit selfish. I think like. Uh, last time I, I was still in advertising, mm-hmm. and I wanted to show my bosses that you know actually co- you can make useful content for people, because mm-hmm. content is slightly different from advertising. Mm-hmm. Advertising is something like a TV commercial. Yep. You don't learn anything from from a TV commercial. Okay. Maybe it entertain you, but content you can actually like learn something from it. Mm-hmm. So when I, I was at my previous company, I told my bosses like you know we should create more content you know for for the brands that we work with. But my bosses didn't want to do. And so, like in a way, I was like a bit spiteful. I was like, "Okay, you don't want to do, I'll show you that it can be done." <laughs> and then, and then I, we, I mean, I wrote some articles and then I asked Rachel mm. to draw it, and then that's how we. So wait, when did you guys meet? We actually met in Polytechnic. Mm. So Polytechnic, I don't know what. Maybe there's an Indonesian equivalent. It's like, uh, you get a diploma. Uh-huh, so okay. not a degree, a diploma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. we know each other since we we're 18 years old. Now we're almost 36 years old. <laughs> so we almost know each other half. <laughs> Of our life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done. So you guys are old friends, right? We're yeah, friends. Yeah, okay. friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are friends first, then we are business partners. Okay. You know? but, but we didn't start work same until we were, I think, Th- 29 or 30. 29 or 30. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think we both had to go and work in the industry and realize like, oh, okay, so this, this is actually how the world works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is actually how, like, you know, like many of the preconceptions that I had when I was mm. in university mm. or in mm. poly mm. were actually not not so accurate. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So the first idea is come from you. Mm. Yeah. How did how did you convince him to come on? Oh. Let's create comic yeah. about this financial called the work salary man. So I think like the difference here is that uh, Riming. So we met in poly. Mm. Uh, we did mass communications. Mm-hmm. And mass communications, if you know about it, is is very broad, right? There's radio, there's journalism, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's print, there's online, all this stuff. Mm-hmm. So. After we met at Poly, we went different paths. He went to advertising, he went to copywriting. Mm-hmm. My dream was always to be an animator. I like drawing, right? Yeah, so that's yeah. my, my dream. And uh, I like visual storytelling and that's how I learn best. So a little bit more about what, what Remy was saying earlier. I, I think I'm one of these friends of his who... Um, so his, his wake-up moment was when his mom unfortunately had that stroke. My wake-up moment was when I graduated university and I realized that I had a big amount of debt. 
from university. My debt was 25,000 Singapore dollars, which is quite a bit of money for me. Mm-hmm. So that made me realize, hey, I, I'm an adult now. I need to learn about money. And as a creative person, I never really thought about this kind of stuff because it's not fun. Yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. I still yeah, don't yeah. think personal finance is very fun or interesting to me, but I'm interested in the things around it and also like trying to figure it out as a storytelling device. So um I would always ask Remy, this is before the work segment, I always ask mm-hmm. him like, hey, should I invest? I hear everybody talk of investing. <laughs> when do I start? Mm-hmm. And the best piece of advice that he ever gave me was he said, Don't invest until you have six months of your savings saved up and that you had cleared some of your more aggressive debtors. And this was information that I thought was very important, but was not really out there, especially for visual learners like myself. So mm. in a way, like what we do with personal finance is that we make it in a format that is easy to understand and very visual. It's something that I wish I had when I just graduated. Mm. So it's quite mm-hmm. nice for me. Like For me, I was lucky because I had a friend like Rimei who was a good communicator who also knew about personal finance. But mm. if you don't have that friend, it's going to be very difficult because at the time before we started work I think a lot of the stuff out there when it comes to personal finance is very blog or very book yeah, tax heavy yeah, 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 very yeah, tax yeah, heavy yeah, 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 then yeah, you right. see all these acronyms like S&P 500 mm. like you know NASDAQ you know, and it's like I, I don't even know what they mean <laughs> every five sentences I read I need to Google what is this thing you know mm-hmm. so it's very difficult to get started yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah because the language the financial language is very very technical yeah and I think it's like o- overly technical yeah. so that the layman can understand yeah. but I think back, back to like the, the first article mm-hmm. I think I wrote it uh, I think it was like the title is like how I saved my first hundred thousand mm-hmm. before uh, 30. T- turning 30. 30, 30, 30, 30. I mean, nowadays I look back and, and I wish like, because now people always think we are all about saving money, saving money, saving money mm-hmm. because we put that specific number there. Mm-hmm. But I think back then my thinking was like, how do we show people that we actually know what we're talking about? Like if you have 100k at 30, it's quite credible, right? Compared to you have 100k at 60 years old. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's not that much of a big deal anymore. Mm-hmm. So I wrote the article, then I said like, hey Wei Chun, you want to help me work on this because you know uh, I wrote it, I put it on some forums. Mm-hmm. It went quite viral. It had like five hundred shares, mm-hmm. and I said like, hey, wait, you know, actually, I've seen Wei Chun's like very cute comics before, mm-hmm. and I thought like, hey, if you draw it, it, can go very viral. But of course, you know, because I was not paying him and he had a job, mm-hmm. he he wait he wait three months before. You never pay me, ask me to do this thing. <laughs> you also not my boss. Do for what? <laughs> and I said okay, and then I wait a while. Do a bit, you know. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but we published it like three, yeah. two to three months later. Yeah. It went like quite viral. It got like two, two thousand mm. shares in the first two weeks on on Facebook, which at the time is is a lot. Yeah. Okay. So, so when you, we did you, it, your first, uh, your first comic. Comic. Yeah. On Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. Okay. And it went viral. Then mm. we, I remember we was we were eating a very cheap meal at a shopping mall. Then we were at the basement of a flight of stairs, and we we're like, what do we do now? Mm. Like, this thing went viral. How do we? Capitalize on it, and then what what going forward? How do we make this into something bigger? Mm. Like, is it a side project? Mm. Is it a business? Mm. We we haven't figured, one uh, off, you know. figured out then. Yeah. yeah, You know the interesting about your comic is uh, the characters. Mm. Yeah. How 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 did you create the characters? They yeah. They don't have name, right? No. Nope. No. Nope. Yeah. Don't so so, the the standard character for our comic is a a featureless human being. Bota, right? No, no hair. No hair, okay. Like no me? clothes. Like me, I don't oh, have no hair. hair <laughs> you choose to cut, man, right? Yeah. So we, we we can't verify this because he has a cat, but yeah. So we it was a design choice and mm. it was also an efficiency choice because I'm an artist and I can I I was trained I went to university to learn animation mm-hmm. and uh, I was trained to draw in whatever style mm-hmm. the project needed mm-hmm. and. Just based on the first comic, I just drew it that way because I feel like it's more relatable if it is somebody with no features. Mm-hmm. That's why our main character is mm-hmm. just without any features. So you can put yourself in mm-hmm. that situation. It's like Spider-Man, right? Versus Superman. Like Superman is obviously like a, a white guy. A white man. Yeah, yeah. but Spider-Man, you, you put on a mask, everything. it could be, could be anyone. Yeah. Yeah. It could be like so, Malay, it could be Chinese, it could be Indian. It was also a design choice that was made for the medium because we I, I knew that we were going to be publishing on social media. Mm-hmm. Social media, you have to be fast yeah. and, and not to say that quality is not important or quality of rendering is not important, mm-hmm. but I think sometimes it's less important. So it was design choice and we also don't do color. It's mm. mostly black and white unless we need to use a color for some very specific reason. It's black and white because it's faster to do. Mm-hmm. So from the very start, it was designed to go on social media to be able mm. to do fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? This is interesting because uh, when Akira Toriyama died, you know, the author of Dragon Ball, 
Oh yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. He Quite said, recently, he, yeah. said, he said, why he uh, make super saiyan? Because he don't want you know coloring book the hair, hair uh, cook mm-hmm. hair, right? Oh, become white color. Yeah, yeah. So become saiyan, a white color, yeah. right? <laughs> when right. he become a super saiyan, oh. so so he so he thinks he can draw faster. Yeah. So yeah, you know, the day so he choose super saiyan, but. After that, uh, Super Saiyan is a, is a legend, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I remember that the author of Naruto said the same thing. Mm-hmm. Because Naruto, if you look at the earlier issues, he had goggles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. the goggles are very hard to draw. Yeah, you have yeah. to draw the perspective and everything, mm-hmm. you don't have to be correct. Mm-hmm. So he said later on, he just took out the goggles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, a, it's about efficiency, right? Uh, but your your design, your character is, is iconic. Oh, thank yeah. you for saying that. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it's iconic, but also we don't own it. Like, we... Because there are other places that also draw uh, bald people with no clothes. Mm-hmm. And people will say, hey, look like your style. Are they copying you? And I say, no, nah, we don't own the, the character. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, we own the... I guess we own the, the style in which we tell the story. Mm-hmm. But the character design, I don't think it's fair for us to say that we own it. I guess that's, it's that's iconic saying. in a way that we are the only one using these characters. Like instruction manual almost. Yeah. To mm-hmm. describe like how to Walk survive to life or capitalism in yeah. general. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what 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 is your first what is your comic that become viral and famous? Oh, the first the the seven hundred K by thirty. Okay. Yeah, that that, I think that, that was two thousand and nineteen, I think. Mm-hmm. But then after that, we had like quite quite a lot of yeah, yeah, quite quite a few viral. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But our most viral story, I don't really remember. Maybe but you can, shared the nineteen ninety seven one. Yeah. I thought that was a good one. Okay, but we can talk about like some of the. Uh, our favorite comics that, that we have done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think like uh, for me it's like uh, I wrote a comic about how my dad survived the 997 uh, Asian financial yeah. crisis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because like I mean back then like Indonesia and Singapore and Malaysia we were all hit hit hard by the crisis. Yeah, yeah. So I think that story was uh, I wrote it for Father's Day, mm-hmm. and uh, it was about uh, how uh, one day I came home and then I saw my dad like you know eh. How come you're, 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 you're home early and you find out like he's retrenched mm. and then uh, I go through his story of, of like uh, unemployment but of course it's very difficult for him because he's because he has like two kids mm. he has to pay for like the, the mortgage on the house mm-hmm. and it's about how he managed to rise up from that challenge and sometimes I think as as children we don't see like the challenges that our parents uh, went through mm. so I think that that piece touched quite a lot of people in, in Singapore like uh, emotionally and even like uh, the Prime Minister of Singapore shared it, mm. and and when when, when my dad the saw Prime it, Prime Minister yeah. of Singapore, yeah, not and, just he yeah. saw it, he shared it and yeah. he talked about his own father, his own father, which oh, is also yeah, the yeah, what yeah, people yeah, consider yeah, the founding yeah, father of, of Singapore, Singapore as a nation, Lee Kuan Yew. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so that yeah. was huge for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then like, I think for my dad because my dad likes Lee Kuan Yew a lot, <laughs> and then I think it was one of the first few times that he he talked to me about the comic, mm. and I think having something that you can talk to like uh, your your dad. Especially about your work at this stage of life mm. was quite precious to me. And then recently, my dad, cause, cause, <laughs> because we, we wrote a book and everything, mm-hmm. and my dad just wanted to say, like, mm, you know, Ming, I'm very proud of you. Yeah. Now I'm like, oh my god, who is this man? Like, how come, you know, uh, 35 years of my life, you now say you're proud of me then? Yeah, yeah. One day you just. Asian parents. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Asian parents. Yeah, yeah. They show love differently. Yeah, yeah, usually Asian parents don't say no. that. <laughs> it's your dad. <laughs> hey, you should tell. Tell your dad. Please tell. Please tell Andrew that you're proud yeah, of him. Yeah, proud of him. Yeah. You want to talk about your favorite comic? Or? Uh, for me, one, one comic that I, I really liked was uh, a comic that I, I wrote about my own uh, life and how I came to Singapore. Because I'm from Malaysia. Okay. Hmm. But um, for me to go and end up in Singapore, I actually was sent to study in Singapore at seven years old by my mom. Mm-hmm. So my mom just pushed me on a bus at 4am in the morning, woke me up. I didn't quite understand what was going on. And then this turned out to be my life from when I was 7 years old to 16 years old. Mm-hmm. So I would go from Malaysia, the southern tip of Malaysia, and every day I would travel to Singapore and back. And travel to Singapore and back. Mm-hmm. And the piece is actually just talking about my journey and like the steps that I had to take to just basically be the same as a as a Singaporean. Mm. So it was sort of to say how much I appreciate Singapore for the opportunities that that it has given me and also to sort of tell Singaporeans that what they have as a square zero and where they start out is amazing. Mm. And I think this one was was big for me because it was my own story and I was very careful to disclaim and say I'm not saying that my journey is the hardest. There are people that have even way harder journeys 
they have to go overseas at a younger age by themselves and have even more difficult journeys and not see their families for way longer mm -hmm. than I did. But this is, I think, also indicative of the story of Southeast Asia mm -hmm. going forward especially. Not just with remote working, but the fact that in Southeast Asia, we are moving all around. And, and one of the ways in which you can have your dreams come true, whether it's, for example, you want to go to a more expensive city to work to earn more money, or mm -hmm. if you are later in life and you want to retire from a more expensive city to go to a, a less expensive city to retire, mm -hmm. th th this movement is going to be very, very, even more, more common uh, mm -hmm. in Southeast Asia next mm -hmm. time. So mm -hmm. I think that was a great story for me. I felt like I had put a piece of myself out there. And of course, a lot of people angry also to say like, you know, are you saying we cannot complain about Singapore government? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's pretty good. It's not perfect, <laughs> but it's pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. So that one hit a lot of right notes for me. I felt like even if work salary man was to say not be around anymore after that, mm -hmm. I, I feel like I had said the thing that mm -hmm. we created work salary man for me to say. I feel like I, I did that pretty mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I think what was great also like, you also said that uh, other people on that bus also uh, felt felt recognized and heard by that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Somebody in the mm -hmm. in the comments said, um, in Chinese like they said, uh, this is our which, which means it's a bit hard to translate, but it means like like he has captured our our life journey kind of mm -hmm. thing. I, and I when I saw that, I, I teared up. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, I, I actually like told a story that mm -hmm. no one else can tell, and I'm grateful that we have the work segment that let me tell the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, because I think your comics, you know, is that's a problem for almost everyone. I think not just in Southeast Asia. I think it's everyone in this world, right? Mm. Yeah. I think there are many problems that young people face nowadays. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's same like almost everywhere in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's a wage stagnation, mm -hmm. income, uh, inequality. Yeah, income inequality, then like mm. you cannot afford the property in the places you want to buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same here. So it's like, it's, it's <laughs> all a, a global problem and we have to figure out like how we're going to deal with it. Yeah. Or at least learn how it happened. Yeah. Right? If, if not, mm -hmm. then we in the future, we, we can't prevent the yeah. future. Yeah, yeah, cases, yeah. 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 And you know what? Uh, <coughs> do you guys uh, read uh, you know the psychology of money books? Mm. Uh, Morgan also. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Morgan also said in his book, the financial education is he can say it's a new things, new knowledge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Com compared with the with the other any uh, other principle, right? Yeah. And you cannot say the financial the financial things. Uh, it's easy because it's really related with the psychology. The, so the, the book is yes. called Psychology of Money, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because sometimes people, when they encounter with the money, they don't use this logic. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. It's, it's actually very emotional. Yeah, a lot right, of times. really, really em emotional. And money is not just a cold heart. A mathematical problem to yeah, solve. It's wrapped yeah. up in like how you yeah, talk yeah. to your partner, how do you talk to your family member, your mm. parents, and things like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also, you have to be able to resist like uh, society. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think nowadays, like with social media and uh, you know a lot of ad advertising, mm -hmm. yeah. your idea of what is normal and what is required to be happy like mm. has changed has changed a lot. Mm -hmm. So like last time, let's say in the time before social media, you can only compare to let's say like. 10 friends around you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe your 10 friends, like, not, not so wealthy, mm -hmm. right? So you'll be happy with quite a simple life. Mm. But now you can go compare with, like, you know, people all over the world. Yeah. If you are already a millionaire in Singapore, mm. you can go compare your life with a billionaire somewhere. Yeah. And you still cannot be happy. And so, like, we have just in this big cycle of you're unhappy forever and you, you think that money can solve your problem. Mm. But actually, at some point, you know, maybe money can solve your your hunger, your food, your shelter. Yeah. But at very, some point, basic ticket, right? Yeah. At very some point, money can't solve mm. like you know, how come uh my partner don't don't love me? Mm. How come my kids are not talking to me? How come my kids hate me? Yeah. Mm. I think these are not problems that money can solve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Uh, I really appreciate what you guys did. It's really really cool. You Thank know, you, uh, because uh, one our e-commerce followers just said. <laughs> I, I will read this first. <laughs> okay. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Because we just promote your the book, the, the book signing, the, thing, the yeah. book signing. So he, the book seller <coughs> will have book signing uh, this Saturday, right? Yeah. Sunday. Mm, yes. Sunday or Saturday? Saturday. I think Sunday. The signing is on. Oh Sunday. yeah, yeah. Sun, Sunday, yeah. Sunday. Okay, sun, Sunday and. The, yeah. You can get their book on Periplus, yeah, Periplus. in Indonesia. 
Oke, okay, uh, okay. see, one of the followers say this. Someone in the DM in in chat said the work seller remain for wisdom, e-commerce for shit post and thief. <laughs> I love it. That's all you need in life, like with, wisdom and shit post. Yeah. Because <laughs> because now nowadays like uh, at least in Singapore, like no one uses mm. Facebook anymore. No one use Facebook. Yeah, very few of, of people like our, oh, our, use our generation. But I use it to shit post. I think just old people using it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so because now only like old people will see my post. I just post things that they mm-hmm. shit post, and old people don't understand yeah. mm-hmm. shit post. My dad will ask me like, "What does it mean?" I'm like, "I don't know. What does it mean?" I just share it. He knows. He knows how to tell you. Yeah, yeah. The shit post is important. Yeah, yeah, what I'm trying to say yeah. is, yeah. we also shit post a lot. Yeah. <laughs> just not on the work side. Man. So we're grateful that mm-hmm. yeah. there's places like e-commerce that, for mm-hmm. example, like. Mm-hmm do this other side of the spectrum that we like to enjoy but we just don't post on both sides. It takes a lot of creativity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, I have a question. Uh, why do you think, uh, no, no, no. What advice do you have for young professional aiming to grow their careers without compromising their work-life balance? You know, mm. because you know, millennial, Gen Z, They like talk about I want to have about work life balance, love life balance. So like it's like a fifty fifty. Yeah. Fifty of my life today is for work. Fifty of my life today is for my own personal things. What mm. do you think? You understand this? I feel like the idea of balance is also very dependent on who you are as a person mm-hmm. and your goals in life. Mm-hmm. So. Yes, we should have work-life balance, but actually as a young person, right, mm. one of the greatest advantages that you have is that you have energy and you have time because you don't yet, for example, have a very big family. Usually, like, usually. Mm. So actually, if you want to change your situation, uh, I know the question was more about balance, right, mm. but I feel like you might want to not say live an unbalanced life, but think about whether it's possible to shift that balance so mm. that you can have more time and energy and effort to change your situation because mm. change doesn't come from walking at the same speed. I liken it to, for example, it's like, you know, the, the escalator, the, the yeah, escalator, mm-hmm. it's like walking up an escalator. Mm. If you are walking at the same speed, you will just stay at the same place, yeah, yeah. which is okay if you're okay being there. But if you want to go higher, mm. you actually have to walk faster mm. and that might take more effort. Yeah. So, At some point, it might become impossible for you to change your situation if you don't want to shift your balance. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying live an unbalanced life, but I'm saying this can be a process where you slowly think about what your needs are and slowly shift your lifestyle. Like what we were saying earlier, it's very easy to compare with other people to the point where like Instagram also, actually Instagram can be quite a superficial platform because you only see, at most you see 10 images from somebody's life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 10 images is not enough unless they purposely do it where they tell you a very nuanced idea of all the problems and all the good things that they have. Like, like if you argue with your dad, you won't post it on Instagram. Yeah, nobody. I mean, some <laughs> people do, right? And then I, I love it when people do sure, that. Sure. But it also takes skills to navigate that kind of nuance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And most people won't go and do yeah. it. Yeah. You know, what things you see in Instagram is by design, man. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's by design. Yeah. You don't put your, you know, your bad, fa- bad yeah. face. Exactly. Or your, your bad days. Or your bad days. At least most people don't. Yeah. Or like, if people, people put their bad days, then people will, will not engage with their yeah. bad days. Because mm-hmm. people also don't know what to say. Yeah. But I think back to work-life balance, yep. I think, so what, what the youth are probably thinking is like, they're looking at like, mm. life and like, work-life balance. Mm. There are many types of work-life balance. You can do work-life balance, like let's say over the course of one year, you mm. work uh, six hours a day, mm. and then after that, you know, okay, no, no. Mm. How should I say? You, you, can 50, you can split a day in a 50-50, 50-50. Mm. But you also can do it to a month, or you can do it to your lifetime. So for example, My form of work-life balance, which I don't advocate for everyone especially, is like I work very hard in my 20s. Mm. Then in my 30s, I have the rest time. Yeah, yeah. So my work-life balance is like, work very hard for 10 years first, and then mm. relax the rest. Mm-hmm. So, so that is also one way to do it. Mm-hmm. But I do think for like the lay person trying to uh, be a, a salary man, right? Mm. It's all about, it's all about skill set. Because I think, right, if you are working in the jobs that a very low barrier to entry, mm. it's very likely you don't have work-life balance. Mm-hmm. Not because you don't deserve it, but because the other people who, who also are working that job, they're willing to work so long hours. Mm. Like, Singaporeans always compare, you know, to like the, uh, let's say you want to work in, let's say you're a graphic designer, right, in mm. Singapore. Mm-hmm. Then you want to be paid 
what is enough to survive in Singapore. So let's say around $3,000. $3,000, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then let's say if there's a, it's an Indonesian graphic designer, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe you can pay them like $600 and they do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Then why would you hire the $3,000 Singapore uh, mm-hmm. graphic designer? Mm-hmm. So for the Singaporean graphic designer to be able to make $3,000, they might increase their skill set. Hmm. To to be better than the competition, yeah, yeah. I think this is true whether like like no matter where you are, hmm. because nowadays with remote work, like your com- competition can be a- hmm. everywhere. Even hmm. from Jakarta, it could be someone from Jakarta competing with someone from like a second or third tier city, hmm. where like the cost of living is is not so high. Hmm. So I think it's all about the skill set because the more skill set you have, the higher skill set you have, like the more bargaining power you have with your employer, hmm. and then the more rights you can also. Uh, you can get you can get more leave days. Mm-hmm. You can get higher salary. Yeah. Because sometimes when people say work life balance, they they mean like I want to to work less but also earn the same amount of money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's never like I want to uh, work less and then hence I work less money. Mm-hmm. Usually when yeah. people say work life balance, they are focused on the life. La. Yeah. They yeah. want more yeah, life. Yeah, 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 yeah. They want more life, but still get the pay. <laughs> yeah, still, still the get pay the same. same. Yeah. Yeah, 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 because it's it's easy for someone to get work life balance right mm-hmm. now, but you just have to take a pay cut. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, can can I just add one, add one more? Mm-hmm. And another thing, like, uh, if you want to have work life balance, may, maybe it's also worth exploring to reduce your expenses. Mm-hmm. Because if you have, let's say, for example, you have to spend uh, a lot of money every month, mm-hmm. then you have to keep working a job that. Gives you no work life balance. Yeah. The yeah. lesser your the lesser your expenses are, yeah. the more likely you can have work life balance. Yeah, yeah. But you need to adjust your life uh, well, you know, life your of life, lifestyle, right? Yeah. yeah. And once again that goes into the whole social media thing we're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you cannot buy sneakers every week? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe every year one sneaker. <laughs> yeah. I think it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because you know, uh because the social media, because uh, Instagram, like like you said before, we can see many people's flexing their, yeah. you know, their life, their luxury life. Uh, but sometimes, if we if you look our point of view, you know, as a ordinary people, not public figure, not celebrity, not from come from rich people, yeah, you cannot have that. Mm. Yeah, maybe they can. You you can see that they have a uh, work life balance. Yes, they can work and they can party hard. Yeah. They work hard, they party hard. But if you see, maybe you just fresh graduate. Yeah, you just uh, you just graduate from university, and you just start working. Mm. You cannot get that thing right. Yes, you need to put your work more mm. than your life balance. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. That's what people forget. Yeah. They yeah. don't. They don't realize. Come on, man. You're nothing now. You you cannot get that yeah. things. Yeah. You need to sacrifice. You need to sacrifice. Yeah. You, you need to hustle, hustle, and mm. more hustle to get yeah. that things, right? Yeah, and it's up to you to decide like how hard you hustle because you don't want to hustle until you're 60 years old and you you're like, oh shit, I didn't enjoy my life. <laughs> now I will just. <laughs> it just. It just. Yeah, do exactly. Many. So it's important to control. Mm. Uh, the things that make you happy. So I mean, mm-hmm. every time I take uh, the the MRT in Singapore, mm-hmm. then I'll see people with like the very very young guys, right? Mm-hmm. They work very hard, work very long hours. They they have like a uh, on their phone, like the picture is a uh, Lamborghini. Okay. Cause like their dream car is mm-hmm. what makes them happy. Mm-hmm. But in my mind, I'm thinking like, wow, it will take you a very long time mm. to get that one million dollar car. Mm. So sometimes maybe it's just easier to let go. Of that one million dollar yeah. car and mm. chase like a dream that is more <coughs> within reach, because sometimes when you compare yourself to, uh, let's say, uh, people with intergenerational wealth, people with mm. rich parents, mm. you must understand that wealth was built over like two or three generations, yeah. mm. and you can't expect to you one person within your lifestyle mm. achieve that kind of wealth unless you are very very lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why I think like it's important that young people have good role models of success, and success could be. That you have a Lamborghini and you have a very nice house. That mm. is a success. Mm. And there's success that requires a very specific uh, blueprint to achieve. Oftentimes, sacrificing work-life balance mm. or oftentimes for your ancestors to have sacrificed their work-life balance. Mm-hmm. Another version of success is also that you know what is enough for you mm-hmm. and you understand that what 
is happiness to you that is not those things because happiness can be a Lamborghini in a nice house it can also be mm. a family that you're proud of that you're raising good kids that you have a regular income but you find time because you're not working so hard to be able to be home to raise good children that can be happiness too mm. happiness could be a pet that you love and mm. then that you spend time with mm. it can be so many versions so young people need to realize that if you feel insecure about the world and you're looking around for role models be very careful mm -hmm. about choosing and aspiring for the wrong thing because you might spend 20 years chasing this thing mm. and then when you're finally sitting in the lumbo you, you realize this is not I get over the feeling of being a Lambo so fast. I heard this saying about Lambo, like any sports car or any supercar is just a supercar for 20 minutes. You sit in it, you drive around for a while, you get used to it because I mean, we're in Jakarta, yeah, the traffic yeah. is the traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah Lambo yeah, also yeah, cannot fly yeah, over. Maybe yeah, next time yeah. can fly, but yeah. now can <laughs> yeah. So be very careful about what you choose. Lambo is great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can appreciate the beauty of a Lambo, but mm -hmm. is it truly going to make me happy? For me, I think no. Mm -hmm. My happiness is being able to have the emotional maturity to go, that's nice. But anyway, I, I, I like these other things and I have so many of these other things. I'm yeah. happy too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. As I'm getting older, right? Uh, you know what? As I'm getting older, Ferrari or Lambo is not my dream car anymore. Mm -hmm. Maybe I, I just enough with the Mini. Mini Cooper? Mini Cooper. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a nice car. Nice car. The nice car, that's, yeah. that's enough, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or in Singapore, because in Singapore, cars are very expensive. Yeah. I think like a Toyota Vios or something. Mm -hmm. It's already 100k Singapore 100K dollars. 100k Singapore. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. So <laughs> you, you need you need to buy it in here. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's very cheap. Man. <laughs> so so many Singaporeans will like view a car as a must have for happiness. Mm -hmm. But actually, public transport is actually not so bad good, already. Yeah. Not everyone needs to drive, or they can just take Grab here. But mm -hmm. because like to them, a car is like a status symbol. Mm -hmm. So I must buy the car to show yeah, like, oh, yeah. I made it. I made it in life. Mm -hmm. Like, I heard people say, like, oh, if, I, if I earn uh, $5,000, time for me to go buy a car. Mm. But then the car will cost like at least 1.5, which is like around one third of your salary every mm. month, mm. for you to drive to, to work sit, and sit in the car, the, 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 the car park lot mm. for like eight hours doing nothing. Yeah. So actually, it's a, it's a big waste. Yeah. So people really need to kind of like untangle what uh, happiness or what success really means. And it's not always, uh, you know, in the psychology of money, mm. uh, it says that wealth is what can't be seen. Mm. So you can see the car, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So your money is already spent there already. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Okay, guys. Uh, can you share some personal experience or story from your followers about balancing career ambition with personal life? Because you ha guys have a lot, many followers, right? Mm. And I believe they have experience tell to you. Mm -hmm. So I think recently uh, we had a contributor send in a story. Mm -hmm. It's about how uh, he bought a 2.2 million dollars Singapore house, and he 2.2 million. Yeah. Sing how uh, how much average for Singapore house? Okay, so an average HDB flat around 500k. 500k. Sing. Yeah. It's a flat on a apartment. Yeah, a, a flat. So like public a housing. public housing. Public housing. So like government. So a government flat maybe. It's five six hundred k. Like SDB, right? S mm. SDB. HDB. Yeah, HDB. 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 Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this would be a house that is four times of that. Mm -hmm. So uh, he he actually shared that you know to to buy this uh two point two million apartment right mm -hmm. he had to work two jobs. So one job in Singapore and during the pandemic, like one job uh, in the US. So he worked remotely, software engineer, okay. right? So and then after that, he because it, it was his dream house, mm -hmm. he dreamed about it for a very very long time. So when he could finally afford it, like he's very happy, mm -hmm. right? But then after that, you know, interest rates came, two zero two two. The the US company can no longer afford to to hire him, mm -hmm. so he lost his US job, income immediately like gone. Half by fifty yeah, percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this year he got retrenched. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he has a uh, one kid and uh, a wife that has a uh, also also pregnant, and the wife is not working. Mm -hmm. So I think now he has to think of ways to make the money and sacrifice like his life for the next ten years, mm -hmm. so that they can keep like the current house. Because if not, then they have to sell the house. They have to make a loss, and like all the all the hard work that he put in before. Mm -hmm. Will will all be lost, right? So 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 that is what I mean by like you should control like what happiness means to you. Because let's say he didn't buy the two point two million dollar house, he could have just bought like a 
maybe a one million dollar house, mm-hmm. and he will be in a very good financial position yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all about controlling, uh, or be, being like being reasonable with what your your wants are. Mm. To point to yeah, because mm-hmm. what what money is is actually mm. time, right? Mm. Because you sacrifice time to earn money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the more money you need, the more time you need to sacrifice. Yeah. Mm. And let's say now we're already in our thirties, right? Yeah. If he has to sacrifice another ten years, by the time he he maybe pay off the house, mm-hmm. he's like forty six years old already. I mean, not to say that is the end of your life, mm-hmm. yeah, but ten years is a is a very very long time to to give up. Yeah. But he still have has uh, these house. Uh, he because if he sells it now, mm-hmm. you have to pay like seller's stamp duty, mm-hmm. which is like a the government's trying to make yeah. sure you don't buy and sell, buy and sell house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it gets too expensive. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I answer the question? I'm <laughs> sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's a story. Yeah, yeah. That, that's just a story, those. right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's interesting because, you know, uh, I have the same experience uh, with my friends. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it also and at, at the pandemic time, at yeah. the pandemic times, uh, you know, this is really, really ridiculous, but it happens in Indonesia. So at pandemic times, uh, there are like some kind of investment, mm. uh, like a forex trading. Yeah, uh, yeah. Forex trading. Singapore, use, Singapore too, yeah. Using robot. Yeah. But the thing is, this is not real trading. It's Ponzi. But oh, oh. Right? but it's Ponzi. Yeah. So if if you see the the returns the, are other people putting money. The returns is a one percent per day. Yes. yes. What? What percent? One yeah. percent. It's like better than Warren Buffett by <laughs> yeah. a lot of yeah. times, right? Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. Not possible. But. Because it's a pandemic, uh, many people uh, lost their job yeah. and they cannot do anything. Yeah. So many of my brands join these things. Right. Join these things. Oh no. Many of my friends have a lot of money from this. Mm. Guess what? One person, one percent per day. So they bought Mercedes Benz. Oh. They bought a new house. Yeah. Even they, you know, uh, some uh, of their group. Okay, well, we need to uh, come on. We buy a house at the same residence. Mm. Uh, oh. Okay. You know, in Indonesia, it's about house price average. Kalau di Singapore dollar berapa ya? Let's say one billion rupiah is about hundred k. Hundred k. Hundred thousand sing. One 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 hundred sing sing dollar. Yeah. So this Ponzi after two years is collapse. Collapse. Yeah. yeah. Many of my brands cannot have. The band still need to pay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The property yeah, yeah, yeah. still need to because pay. Because they don't pay cash. Mm. Yeah. They take credits. Mm. And after that they need to sell it. Sell oh. at a lower yeah. price yeah, and yeah, lose yeah. money. Yeah, yeah. Be in debt now. I think in yeah, in Singapore like the a lot of people in crypto also did that. Yeah. 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 Like <laughs> so now like let's say your crypto is worth two million, so you think like, mm-hmm. okay, I can mm-hmm. buy a one million dollar house. Mm-hmm. Seems quite reasonable. Mm-hmm. But you forget crypto is is very volatile. Yeah. And mm-hmm. like gains are not gains until you lock in until you sell. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. It's all paper. Oh. Yeah. Or you ju- you guys just really, really, really lucky <laughs> person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think so, this is one of the things that come on having online communities and Instagram and compare like your your sense of normal can be so warped well because we also have a lot of like readers and also like friends that mm. got into a dark place during COVID because it was a difficult time mentally for everybody. Mm-hmm. Then you just online all the time. Then if you get very deep into these Discord communities with these NFTs and cryptos and stuff, right? You can be so inside there that your normal is one percent a day, for example. Mm-hmm. It completely throws your logic out the window. Then you get deeper and deeper. And because you are so invested in this thing, you also cannot hear it if somebody tries to tell you, bro, can you watch out? This is not realistic. Mm, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then if everybody else buying the same uh, project, you know, I also yeah. want to join yeah. my friends. It yeah, becomes yeah. a social thing. Yeah, yeah. So money is like, a lot of times not just here, it's, it's here yeah, also, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. The psychology, yeah. you know? And I think it's like you are drawn to like risky investments. Mm-hmm. I think often you... It might not turn out well for you. So, uh, for example, I, I know a guy who who make all the right bets, right? Mm-hmm. Like maybe he bought a uh, Tesla, right? Mm-hmm. Tesla stock went up thousand mm-hmm. percent. So then he he buy the next hot thing. Mm-hmm. But uh. but you cannot be right all the time. Mm-hmm. So what happened to my friend? He he was right six times. He made like at least one million dollars. Mm-hmm. The seventh time he was wrong. 
and that one wrong undo yeah. all the six times. Yeah, why? Yeah, yeah. Why? Because the previous six times train <laughs> train him. Yeah, you think I, it's him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's I'm, me. I'm not laughing at you. I'm bro. good. I'm so sorry. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but the previous six times made trains him to believe like mm. I'm I invincible. Yeah. Mm. I will get it right. So you all when you all in to everything, sometimes you get nothing. They call it the hot hand fallacy. It's a basketball term when somebody mm-hmm. shoots a basket and they can't miss. They they have this fallacy of because I've been hitting it mm-hmm. all this while, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna miss. I have a hot hand. But the tendency and the statistical what they tell you is that you will revert back to the mean eventually. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have six wins in a row, I think you should just cash out because chances <laughs> are you're gonna come back to fifty percent. Yeah. Unless you're really that good, lah. Yeah. yeah. And very few people are that good. Yeah. 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 Do you have a st- uh, story, bro? Uh, I think uh, one that, that I really enjoyed, which was a story that we actually published recently, was about mm. one of uh, one of my juniors from my art school. Because I went to art school, university mm-hmm. art school, mm-hmm. I learned animation. She was an animation student in Polytechnic. She had a diploma in animation. And then mm-hmm. she got she went to the same school that I did, university, right? Mm-hmm. To study interactive, uh, mm. interactive art, which is a very specific art form mm. that is not that easy to find jobs in, in Singapore, at least at the time. Mm-hmm. So the story was about how she's sharing that even though her dream was to be a creator, to mm. be creative, that was my dream too, which is why it hit me so hard. What actually success looked like for her was to not follow her passion after she graduated. And I think these kind of stories need to be shared more. It's, it's not very easy to share because when you're so invested, as I was in my passion of being an animator, being an artist, mm-hmm. it's my identity, mm-hmm. right? That I feel like I have to make this happen. But the industry is not in a good place. Animation industry is not in a good place. Yeah. We hear about Pixar recently just laying off a lot of people. Yeah, 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 yeah. So sometimes it's not even your fault. You might be a good artist, but if the industry conditions are not there for you, actually sometimes what is the right thing to do is that you don't chase your passion at least for a while yeah and that's a very difficult pill to swallow and uh, i think that was a good story that we put up because it's a real story about somebody who did not follow their passion went for what some people might say is an unsexy job but sometimes these things can be the right path because we live long lives and i also follow the same thing i mm-hmm. I, I, I have a freaking master's degree in animation mm-hmm. but i never once worked a full-time animation role in my life because i looked at the industry and i went Actually, that might not be the kind of life that I want in terms of the salary that I get. Yeah. So, in fact, I went this other route. I went into uh, online publishing. Then I went into a, a job that I had no interest in, which was medical technologies for a while. Mm. I still found fun in the job, but it's not something that I'm passionate mm. about at all. And I felt like I was selling out. I'm betraying my passion. I'm betraying all my friends who mm. thought that I was a good artist mm. and not sticking in it in the industry. Mm. But ironically selling out for a while and chasing jobs that gave me money allowed me when the time started like when time came when we started work Simon, I was still working in that medical technology job mm-hmm. and it was paying well enough that I had saved up enough money that when the time and opportunity came for us to try doing work salary man full time I could take that chance because I had paid off my debt mm. and I had saved up enough money to give work salary man say six months so we can run the work salary man for six months without uh, mm-hmm. money coming in mm-hmm. and that that was so huge so in a way selling out enabled me to chase my passion more so that was a story that, that we hear a lot about especially nowadays a lot of my my peers or my friends in the industry our readers also are telling us I studied this degree and it's doing very badly now what do I do mm-hmm. sometimes the answer is you just survive first yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think yeah. sometimes pursuing mm-hmm. your passion is a is a privilege it is a privilege. Right. it is very privilege yeah. Yeah. so I mean mm-hmm. I've seen this meme online. It's like uh, mm-hmm. artists who draw for passion, then they're all, they're all very Oh, very rich. nice, eh? Mm. Yeah, then like, artists who draw for work, then it's like the hair messy, <laughs> the hair messy, the <laughs> dark eye ring. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it takes process, yeah, right? Like, like, wait, like, wait. I think wait, is a good example, right? Mm. It takes process until he can become, he create uh, with you the work yeah. salary, yeah. Man, yeah. Man. Yeah. but at not be- the beginning. Of course. Yeah, and it's yeah. not exactly what I thought my dream was going to be. I thought my dream was that I'm working at Pixar, or I'm working at Ghibli Studios, mm-hmm. or some anime studio. Mm. But the work salary man is the closest that I have to what they call ikigai, but it's not really ikigai. You know the four things like yeah, yeah, something that you love, yeah, something yeah. that society finds useful, mm. something that can pay you money for, and mm. something that uh, I forgot the last one. But you know, something you're good at. Something you're good, you're at, good yeah. at. Yeah. So work somewhere is the closest I've been to that level of like mm. success. So it it I had to take a while. I had to go off the path first, then come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But now the work salary man is become huge thing in Singapore, right? 
It's all right. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. okay. So okay. it's it's changing your life. Yeah. Both yes. of you, right? Yeah. 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 How 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 you guys uh, feels about this? What is oh man our our comics is so uh, it's popular now. Yeah. It's changing your life or what? Well, I think my life hasn't changed that much. Okay. Uh, since. So you don't buy Lamborghini? No, no, I don't buy Lamborghini because uh, that's the opposite of what what you should do. Yeah, I think uh, for me, what has changed is like now I have more freedom to to do what I want. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean like I buy, I buy more and more expensive things. Mm-hmm. The the true thing, the true the true game changer is like I can choose not to work with people that I know are bad for me. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you work with clients, mm-hmm. they take very long to pay, mm-hmm. or sometimes they don't respect you as a as a person, yeah, you're yeah, just yeah, a vendor. Yeah, 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 they're yeah. like, where's this? Then, like, change this, change that, change this, change that. Mm. And then they're very rude to you. Mm. So now, like, with some financial uh, stability or in- independence or mm. freedom, I can mm. say, like, nah, it's okay. I, I don't work with you. And that's fine. Mm. So I think, like, these are, like, the bigger benefits from me. Mm-hmm. Uh, not, not so much the material stuff. And also, of course, now we have the privilege to, let's say, take one month off to bring my family mm. overseas. Okay. Like because mm. my parents are getting older, mm. and now I can spend more time with them overseas. Mm. I think like these are the more imp- the more game changing things mm. uh, with with uh, with success yeah. Like yeah, mm. and, but also I think between both of us, we're also very wary that success also don't last forever. Mm-hmm. So it's important to not get used to it, mm. right? Because mm. every business dies. And you know, old yeah, men yeah, may yeah. die in, in, in two to five years, you know, mm. and be, be forgotten in time. And mm. for us, like, mm. it's also adjusting our mindset to, to know that, okay, you know, this is good, mm. but it may not last forever, mm. which is why it's important to keep growing and, and learning as a person. And mm. just because old men is successful doesn't mean we are tied to the brand. Like, ideally, like, I can do my own thing after old men ends, mm-hmm. which can do his own thing. And, and that's how we... We try to mm. think of it, mm. the, the the whole world's MN situation, mm. even though we found success. Yeah. Maybe a bit morbid, la, but I, I think it's realistic. No, mm. not morbid. La. But I think like the kind of success that you just said that we have, I think, or the kind of flexibility and freedom that we have, I think it's comparable to a Lamborghini for me. La. Mm. Then some people will say, why not have both? Mm. Well, if you if I'm not in a position where I can have both easily, if I want to mm. have both that freedom and a Lambo, I think I'll have to work so hard for the next 20 years that <laughs> yeah. it's not something that I want, right? Yeah, yeah. And mm. your, your question about um, how has life changed, for mm. me, I think like, actually a lot, but like, for me, it's more like, like Remy said, it's in the, how to say it, it's like, we have a higher floor now. Mm-hmm. Meaning, if things go wrong, we can't fall that far down because we have a good base in terms of the money that we have saved mm. up and stuff. Mm. And also what I, I like to remind myself to be grateful about is that Actually, all these things for me, like, like, we don't have a lot of new material things, like, I think maybe that's where one way of putting it, but we have a lot of like, like immaterial uh, security now. Mm-hmm. And that's good because like, um, when I think back to um, what it felt like just before we started the work ceremony, just mm-hmm. before it blew up, like, right? I, I, I felt a lot of imposter syndrome and a lot of like, what am I doing with my life up till the point where mm-hmm. the work salary man, I think, got our first client which is like 10 months after we did our first post mm. right up to that point I, I i still had moments of like sadness where i felt like what am i doing in my life mm. like my other friends getting like 30 mm. under 30 this and that i have no validation i just have a job which is actually a pretty good thing but my mental state had become mm-hmm. so low sometimes you know and thinking about the work salary man right it, it felt like in the span of about a year or 10 months right my life had completely changed I didn't have a Lambo, but I have now this portfolio thing, which is the Works Ironman, and mm. this kind of a, a, a success story that I can use to have other things down the line. Like, even if the Works Ironman fail, I can still get a decent job with the portfolio that I have with the mm. Works Ironman. Mm. So, I, I feel like the one takeaway I might say to somebody who aspires to have a, a different sort of life, right, or, or, or a success that they don't feel that mm. they have, mm. you might be closer than you think. Because mm. up till the point where we started Works Ironman, I still felt like, Oh, what am I doing? I'm just trying stuff and it's failing all the time. But sometimes when you keep trying, right, it could be like it's a it's a it's a parable or something that I heard uh Phil Jackson, which is the coach of the Chicago Bulls and mm. the LA Lakers say. Mm. Like sometimes it could be that it takes a thousand hits to break a wall, right? Yeah, yeah. Breakthrough. Mm. 
but you will not see any cracks on the wall until you hit that 1000. So you might be hitting, hitting, oh, it's not breaking. On the other side, it's cracking, but you can't see it. <laughs> but if you had given up at the 998th knock, that would have been so so crazy to think about. Mm. Because there are so many times where it's so difficult to be mm. doing a day job, aspiring mm. to start something successful. Mm. And you start and fail, start and fail, start mm. and fail. But mm. the next one could be around the corner. Mm. Mm-hmm. So you may be closer than you think. Yeah. And I think it's yeah. worth it to keep trying. Yeah. 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 But the walks element is become business, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So it's role changing. Role, role changing. changing. I don't know world changing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have a very small team of mm. five people, including mm. the two of us. So it's a very, very small operation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think our impact is considered quite okay for the amount of people that we have and the amount of resources that mm. we deploy. Yeah. Okay. But, but we kind of like it that we don't want to scale too big too fast. Also. Yeah, because why? It's too big, right? Mm. Then every month you must pay the salary. Yeah. 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 Then if the salary is very high, then you cannot say no to the client. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then you must deal with the root clients mm-hmm. and then like the Bad quality of life like yeah. goes downward. Yeah. 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 So again, it's like with personal finance. If your expenses is high, mm. you don't have a lot of uh, an opportunity to say no. You don't get to say no a lot. Mm-hmm. You must say yes to everything that comes along. Mm-hmm. And I think being able to reject the bad shit in life mm-hmm. is very important. Yeah. And same for our business also, which is, which is our business. Mm-hmm. That's why I like things that are small. I, I feel like this is the one great feature about social media. Yeah. Is that with a very small amount of resources and capability, with mobile phone and internet connection, you can reach millions of people if your mm-hmm. content is good enough. Mm-hmm. And I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, like I said before, you, you guys have a book right so this yeah. book yes. is a compiled from your comics yes yeah. okay. and articles yeah. and articles yeah, yeah so i think, forgot to bring yeah. a copy yeah. 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 yeah i think it's some of it is new material mm-hmm. but i think what we want to do because sometimes because of the algorithm you you get our content in like bits and pieces mm-hmm. so sometimes we might say like for example work, work very hard but sometimes we might also say take life chill mm-hmm. so you might get confused mm-hmm. because why work say men sometimes say work hard? Why sometimes say like I, I like they are not consistent? Mm-hmm. But of course the the real message is somewhere in, in the, the gray area, right? Mm-hmm. So we created this book to compile like what we wanted to say mm-hmm. in one in one like in one book. Okay. That you can And there's also a narrative yeah. flow because uh the, the, the title of the book is The Woke Simon Crash Course to Capitalism and Money. Mm-hmm. Uh and Rimming wrote it in a way that is like it starts off like with what it's like to be a fresh grad, mm. where you think like I I I'm so, it's so life is so unfair. Like my friends are so much richer in terms of their they got parents. They've rich parents. Got yeah. rich parents. Mm-hmm. So we really take it through like on a journey sort of mm-hmm. thing where it starts off. We explain to you why the world is unfair. Mm-hmm. You have to accept that it's unfair. Mm-hmm. Then the next one is okay. Now I accept that. What's the next step? How do I? get better skills then I can earn more money then after earn more money how do I invest mm-hmm. so it's a it's a good flow and then yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean we didn't just shamelessly you know book five comics and we, without any value add mm-hmm. so we, we slot like stuff in between so that there's a very nice flow mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay how much is the price for, for the book well, I don't know in the price <laughs> I can't remember yeah. like in, in the Singapore, price Singapore? I think around about 30 dollars yeah. sing dollars For yeah. 40 40, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, Oh, so we already have a a pilot series of animation Mm -hmm. that you can find on our YouTube channel and online. If you search like Mm -hmm. the Vox Simon animated series, we made a pilot of about eight episodes. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing with animation is, and I'm saying this as an animator, animation is very expensive. Because for every second of moving imagery, right, there's 24 drawings that you need to do. Yeah, we did, we did animation too. Yeah, expensive. But we we give up. (laughs) Right. Why why do you give up? It's so difficult. (laughs) It's very difficult. It's too many resource, yeah. you know. Yeah, and and that, that makes everything harder. Like, if yeah, you want yeah, to change yeah, something yeah. after it's been produced, you yeah, are wasting yeah. more resources than yeah. if it's just a comic strip. That's why we do comic strips. Efficiency, right? Mm-hmm. Like, if, if I don't like the panel, I just change this one drawing. Mm. So, uh, I would love to do animation because this is it's, it's still my dream. I still love animation. I still consume it as a fan regularly. Mm-hmm. I love anime. I love movies. I love Pixar. I love Ghibli movies. Mm-hmm. Everything, right? Um, it's just I have to be aware that we are not a company with unlimited resources. Mm. So maybe it's something down the line, but it probably won't be something that we do ourselves. 
like we'll probably partner with somebody to yeah, co-invest yeah, yeah, and yeah. co-produce and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It would be great lah because like yeah. there's only so many people we can reach that is reading. Like people would like sometimes a, a more uh, animated experience where you just sit down and watch it and they say the things. You don't have to read and scroll mm-hmm. yourself. So mm-hmm. that would be something we'd love to do more of lah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, man. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I think for me it's just a it's just a privilege to reach mm-hmm. like so many people like mm-hmm. in in Southeast Asia as well. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then. I mean, it's probably like the most meaningful work that I've done in my life, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Like trying to educate people on like the difficult topics that our generation mm-hmm. faces. Mm. So just reaching more people would be would be awesome for me. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But you guys uh, with this works letter man, I think you guys make a legacy, right? <laughs> I don't know. I so. I mean, I mean, I my, my 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 dad say he proud of me, so I I guess that's the legacy. Enough already, yeah, right? enough for me. That's you know what? I uh at at the past I always think about this. What if if what if I die? After that, people forget about me. Mm. Right. Yeah. So I need to do some things, create something. Right. So when I don't, I don't leave this this board anymore. Yeah. People still know me mm. from what? Okay. From Your works. Uh, from our our works, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe if you if you don't leave this world anymore. Okay. Right? Yeah. yeah. People still will. You know, Remember you? I think that's this way. Yeah. Yeah. I used to actually I identify what you said because mm-hmm. I used to think that way. Like I I wanted people to remember my name, but mm-hmm. I think nowadays it's changed a little bit. Where I I want to leave a mark in terms of the work that I do. So I mm-hmm. I think we've done that. Like, I feel like even if people don't remember our name specifically, like we have made something that have poked some people mm-hmm. and caused them to decide that actually this might be what I want my life to change in the direction of, yes, and if yeah. we can help. Just mm. one person become a work salary man. Achieve their dreams. Yeah. Actually, yeah. whatever yeah. that dream yeah. is, yeah. right? Yeah. Especially if it's not getting a lumbo, I feel like yeah. we've done our bit lah. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think okay uh, If it fails tomorrow, when we die tomorrow. We're okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah but okay, I, okay, but okay. I don't want to die tomorrow yeah. Yeah. I mean, hopefully, I live slightly longer. Yeah. Then yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Right, yeah. Tomorrow will be fast. Yeah. 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 <laughs> wow, man. But thank you guys for for your sharing, man. Uh, Thanks I think, for having yeah, us. Yeah. I fun. think y- what you guys doing right now can inspire many people, not just in Singapore, but in Indonesia, mm. or Malaysia, mm. or maybe another country. Mm. So hopefully you can create something bigger. Thank you, man. Hopefully. Thanks, man. <laughs> thank you. We we'll try. We we'll try our best. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys, thank for you. for sharing. Uh, I think I need to close this podcast. So, Mars uh, if you want to, you know by their book you can go to the Paris plus or follow their instagram the work salaryman you can see their comics many good comics yeah, and maybe they can change their life to be work salaryman <laughs> <laughs> okay see you on thank the you, next man. episode for thank you thank you, thank you fam. Yeah.